Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today we're gonna paint this peacock using soft pastels. And I'm using a new set of pastels that are from Ardex. And they are brand new to the scene. They cost about $40 for a set of 48 over on Amazon. There may be coupons, they're new. Oftentimes there's coupons when a product is new. And we're gonna do most of the painting with those. I am starting off with a pastel pencil. This is a, a Derwent pastel pencil. It's one of the older, it's one of my older ones, so it's got just the, uh, it doesn't have the wave at the end of the pencil, but um, I'm sketching on in this kind of like, uh, almost looks like a seafoam green color. And I'm working on the textured side of Canson Mutant's pastel paper. That's a really great affordable pastel paper. You have one side that's smoother and one side that's rougher. And I think it's also really nice for colored pencils. So um, if you're looking for an affordable paper and you want one that comes in a variety of colors, that's a really nice way to go. You can get assortment packs or buy large sheets of, um, of single colors. It comes in a bunch of different ways. So you can get it you know, up to, I think, 19 by 25 inches, all the way down to like 9 by 12. So very affordable, very easy to come by. Blick usually has a pretty good price on it by the sheet or in the packs, and you can find it on Amazon too. But I always recommend that you check Blick as well, because often Blick is cheaper and you get a better variety. And then they ship a little bit nicer too. So, um, so there you go. I'm sketching the body, the area where the feathers kind of come together at the back of the tail, and also as the feathers kind of splay out, I'm basically just sketching the eyes of the peacock feathers. I'm trying to get a nice balance, basically, and now I'm going in with a little bit of detail around the face. I'm leaving this in real time. This was a really quick um, drawing to do, and I'm doing it at the 9 by 12 size, just for, um, just for a size reference for you. I'm jumping in with a green pastel that's very similar to the color I sketched with. It's kind of a seafoam green color. And I'm just kind of uh, not really filling in the chest area because I want to leave some tooth of the paper to be able to grab some other colors. But I am adding um, quite a bit of that color in almost as a base layer. My reference photo is from the Color Cube by Sarah Renee Clark. This is such a fun product. You get, um, well, there's two different cubes all told there's like 500 different like little reference photos with color palettes so it's just kind of fun if you ever get stuck in an art block like a creative slump and you want something to go by so it's a lot of fun it's definitely my biggest uh, get me unstuck and get me painting tool that I have and I will link that down below there's also a digital version which can save you some money on shipping especially if you don't live near any of the shipping um, uh, areas so uh, yeah, check it out. It might be something that you're interested in. A lot of the reference photos, though, can be found on um, royalty-free websites like Unsplash and Pixabay and whatnot, so um, you definitely can find, if not this photo, a very similar one that uh, that you could use for this. I'm using kind of like, um, and, and oh, I apologize, I have not memorized the color chart from this set and I just kind of go by eye. Uh, this kind of is like a ultramarine kind of cobalty blue and I'm putting in little curvy strokes to symbolize the edges of the feathers just to kind of get that little bit of texture and color down and um, I also added some at the top of the head. Now in with a darker blue, I am going in and adding some of more of the shading areas. So I'll put this under the neck to kind of make the head pop out a little bit. I can put some on the edges of the, the chest area too if I want to make the chest area feel a little bit more rounded and have the back a little more shaded, or I could do that with a darker color later. I'm using some of this beautiful green gold color to get the um, kind of the back area of the of the bird. So it goes from chest, then you kind of have some foreshortening. Then you can see um, the back kind of base of the tail area. And I'm bringing some of that into the front as well, where it's going to have that uh, iridescent factor. I'm using some lighter blue now to give some of the highlights in the front of the chest and also make it appear more round. So if you highlight... Um, areas that are closer to you, it's going to make them feel a little rounder. So if you think of like having a cylinder, like a, a can of soup or something on the table, you could put shading on the edges of that um, can of soup and you could put a highlight in the middle of the can of soup and that's going to make it feel more like a cylinder rather than a rectangle. Uh, same thing here with the body of the bird, which is also kind of rounded and cylinder shaped. I'm adding some of that blue highlight at the top of the head as well to help the head come forward. And I'm going to start building in a little bit of the um, 
uh, the stacked feathers that are at the base of the tail. So uh, basically what I'm doing is I'm just kind of um, sketching the ends of the feathers, if that makes sense, kind of the, the tips of them, basically, how they're all kind of like stacked on um, and uh, kind of tiered that way. And then of course those little, those dashes that I'm making, those would be the eyes of the feather that just haven't grown and unfurled yet. So uh, just kind of think of things logically when you're working. Um, generally nature works in a logical manner um, and you know things will be spaced out in a logical manner and uh, will gradiate out evenly. Does that make sense? I don't know. Uh, I didn't <laughs> I didn't narrate this as I was painting. I was just kind of listening to some podcasts while I was sketching. I find that I work a lot faster that way. Um, but I have to say when I go back to voice it over after the fact, um, I just want to say, hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> I almost want to time lapse it, but I do know that um, many viewers find it a lot more um, instructional to see the uh, pastel strokes kind of going down in real time. So if you prefer time lapse, you can let me know in the comments below. Maybe I will time lapse. It's easier for me to time lapse it, quite frankly, but um, I just want it to be the most effective for uh, for viewers. Um I'm just adding this green gold to the bottom of the eyes of the feathers. And notice I haven't added the barbs yet. I haven't connected them to the body. For me, I think it's a little bit easier to kind of put these bullseyes out and then connect them after they're painted in. Um, otherwise, you have to draw them where the lines come out. And I, I feel like that's uh, less, you're less likely to get a well-balanced um, composition that way. I love how bright this blue is against the black paper. It just really, um, it really kind of screams with vibrancy. And uh, that's why I love to use pastels on black paper. It just really has such a punch to it. And I think it's so pretty. Now, what I want you to do when you're looking at something that's iridescent, like peacock feathers, um, you may have a base color, right? But that base color is going to shift depending on how the light's hitting it. So you've got this... Um, this feather that's got greens and blues and golds and if it's turned one way the blue might even look purple if it's turned another way it might be a pastel blue if it's turned another way it might be a, a cobalt blue so you want to look at that and get those nuances and that's going to give you more of an iridescent quality now i will tell you uh, i mentioned the color cube that i'm using as a reference photo the uh, card there um one thing i'll say about that the good thing about it is that it's a small photo so you really can't see that much detail. So you're really just going to be jumping in, going for it and making up a lot as you go along because you just can't zoom in and see the detail. I guess you could with the digital version if you had it on a computer screen or on, um, on an iPad where you could zoom in. But this, I'm just using the analog color cube. And um, because... I can't bring in all that visual information. I can't, it's a small, uh, it's like, you know, a four inch by three inch photo or so. I can't get in there and see the detail. I'm going to be really um, distilling it down to the basics. I'm going to get those basic colors, those basic shapes, and I'm not going to be um, fussing with it. And it's going to be a more quick project. When I end up sketching from the color cube images, I'm doing 30 minutes tops because that's about all the color and photo information I'm gonna get there. That's all the detail I'm gonna see. And for someone who tends to get, I don't wanna say overwhelmed, but gets uh, analysis paralysis, you know, it's like, okay, well, what am I gonna draw? And I, and I put it, so much pressure on it, um, just grabbing a card like that and just drawing what I see and not having a limited amount of information and a limited size that I'm working from. For me, that's very freeing and it really gets me painting because you know, if you can't see every little detail, you can't paint every single detail unless you're gonna make it up. And um, I kind of like to do that once in a while. Now, obviously you wanna become a more realistic um, artist. You'll need to have you know, bigger reference photos you can zoom in on, absolutely, or you'll be needing to observe from life. But um, for kind of getting the rust off the brushes or pastels, as the case may be, having a smaller photo for me is better. Just It's like working from a thumbnail sketch, basically, and it helps me jump right in there. Now I'm adding the barbs on the feathers. So I'm just kind of like connecting the dots, connecting the, um, the eye of the feather to kind of like the tail area where all of these feathers would be radiating, kind of radiating out of the bum. <laughs> I know it sounds crude, but that's kind of how, it, how it's going. Um, like a flower, how all the petals radiate from the center. It's kind of the same thing here with a peacock. Um, but putting them in now, it's much easier to balance it out. And then I can take the imaginary feathers that are off the screen, off the page, and I can make barbs that would go out to those imaginary ones we can't see, basically. So uh, it's all about balance. It's all about balance. It's all about um, 
making things feel natural. And um, I'm also working with a fairly limited palette. So this set of pastels is 48 colors, and I'm not even using a quarter of the colors in the set. So um, that can be really helpful too if you get overwhelmed, is working with a smaller limited palette um, and mixing and layering up your colors to get what you need. That way you're not um, agonizing over hundreds of different different colors so that's another thing now if you wanted to have something where you could just kind of maybe you're an oil painter or you're an acrylic painter but you just want to be able to sketch in color sometimes something like this is perfect you know you could use this in a sketchbook if you wanted to um, you could even spray it with hairspray if you were worried about it smudging onto the facing pages you know you could keep it totally easy breezy like that these pastels I have a review on of these on my youtube channel I highly recommend checking it out if you're considering purchasing this because um, I do have I, I do compare them with other pastels in that same price point and to show you the pros and cons. But for a, a sketching medium, I think they're good for the price and um, and yeah, they get the job done. The colors are vibrant um, and they're fun to work with. Uh, but it's only 48 colors. You may find that limiting even when I'm using a set of 120 or my boxes, my pastel drawers that have hundreds of pastels in them. I'm not using hundreds of pastels in a painting. I'm pulling out, you know, maybe 20 sticks and I'm working from that at the most. Um, and I'll blend and layer and get the colors I need that way so I don't end up with just this color vomit on my page that goes to mud. You want to um, kind of choose your colors deliberately so that you end up with harmony. And uh, and we are ending up with some harmony here. We're using a lot of blues and greens. I could have used some purple in here. Uh, purple actually would have been nice with the gold, but I didn't feel like it needed it as I was working. Um, and that might have added a little bit too much discord. I'm not sure. Um, but I do like the way it came out and it was a lot of fun to paint. Now I am blending some strokes. And the reason I do that is because I really like a variety of um, edges. I like some soft edges. I like some hard edges. I like some smudges. I like some crisp lines. And I feel like having that um, that variety just makes it a little bit more interesting and gives it a little more depth and uh, perspective. So if you have some fuzzy areas, that's going to push back and push a little out of focus. And then it's going to allow the crisper areas of your painting to grab your attention, such as like a sparkle in the eye or a little highlight on the beak or something like that. You know, it just allows you to have that variation and variety in a piece. So don't be afraid to smudge some, but don't smudge everything. Don't blend every little thing thinking you want everything perfect and blended. That may be perfect if you're doing like a really close up of a flower petal and you'd want that flower petal perfectly blended, but you'd probably also want some crisp lines. You'd probably want some veins in the flower that would be sharp, or maybe you'd show part of the center of the flower which would have seeds in it and have you know texture to it so you want that variety of textures that variety of soft and hard edges um, the variety of colors but you also want harmony and that honestly it comes with practice the more you paint the more you draw the better you're going to get at this and you're going to be able to determine what your style is there are some painters that blend very little or if they are going to blend in a pastel they're going to blend a pastel with another pastel uh, and they're going to try to keep it as fresh as possible and that may be your style you may be someone who likes to have tons of blending and the only detail the only sharp edges are going to be your detail and that's fine too but you're not going to develop your style thinking about it you're going to develop your style doing it and um, you might love the look of something now, but then when you're actually putting it into practice and you're creating that look, you may not like it so much anymore. You may get sick of it. Now you're noticing, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but I have put in with a pastel pencil some little sharp lines that are kind of radiating at a diagonal from the um, some of the barbs. That's just to give the illusion of the little flags on the feather, those like furry, feathery little... I think they're, what are they called? Flag. I think they're called flags. I think that's what they're called. Uh, the part that come off of the barb of the feather. You can see right there at the top. Um, I don't want to do it everywhere. I just want to do it here and there to give a hint at that fullness and that texture and the lushness of the peacock plumage. Um, but if I did it everywhere, it would just be lost in a jumble of cross hatching, and I don't want that. So I love to have that, um, the uh, variety of using a pastel pencil with a stick pastel. It's really nice to be able to go in there with a pencil to add the texture. And there's lots of really good brands out there. This is another Derwent. Um, I think it's a Derwent. It might be a Van Gogh. I'm actually, you know what? No, that's a Van Gogh. They all work well together. I have Derwent's. I have General's. I have Van Gogh. I have um, Tinted Charcoal from Derwent. They all work really well together. Um, 
And there's lots of other brands out there too that are great. I just don't use them enough to justify needing a larger set or needing more pencils. Um, but I mean, I think Derwin does 72. I'm not sure about Caran d'Ache and um, Carbothello. I know there's quite a few brands out there. I love the way this rusty brown, it's kind of, it's got a lot of orange in it. It looks next to those two blues I have in the eye. Um, brown is really a desaturated orange and that one's actually a little bit more saturated because it has the rust undertones. Um, blue and orange are opposites and they make each other seem more vibrant. So whenever you're kind of stuck like, oh, I need a little punch of color, I don't know what to do, look for the complementary color of the color you're going for. So um, maybe you have a lot of yellow and you're like, ah, it's just, I've lost too much detail, it's too muddy, grab some purple. Now you don't want to blend the purple in. You wouldn't want to blend purple with yellow, but if you have it next to it, just like a little slice of color, that's going to give you that little perk. Just like I take that little slice of that rusty orangey brown, add it next to the blue and get that little burst of energy. Um, so think about that. If you don't come to color theory knowledge, honestly, you can get a color wheel and uh, make that, you'll be able to just look across on a color wheel and tell what your complementary color is. Um, and you'll get it. I mean, the more you paint, the more you um, mix colors, the more you'll understand it. It's not something anybody has intuitively from birth. It's something you get by by um, painting and mixing colors and drawing and you will get it. So just um, don't feel frustrated if you don't know what a complementary color is or you don't know what's across on the color wheel or you don't know how to mix this or that or what's gonna go to good together. It will come with practice. Um, if you do feel a little um, unsure about colors and you wanna increase your confidence, that's another fun thing about the color cube that I use for my reference photo. They actually, uh, Sarah Renee Clark, who developed those, puts palettes together based on all the reference photos. So it can give you a starting point. I generally um, just go by the, um, you know, a reference photo and I'll pull colors from that. But if you are nervous about that, that could be a kind of a creativity kickstart for you. So another, I just love that product. It's so, um, it's so useful and inspiring and enjoyable to use. I'm throwing in some blue, um, kind of accent lines with in the direction of the barbs, just to kind of add a little bit of fullness to the, um, the feathers there on the uh, on the left hand side and also kind of almost frame the image a little bit too. I'm going back in with that seafoam green color and trying to add a little highlight onto the bird and I but I am feeling like I'm kind of saturating the paper at this point and one downside to this set of pastels I found was um, because it is a limited selection of colors um, I found it difficult to get a, uh, a bright enough white and a bright and a dark enough black. So I think if you buy this set of pastels, you will also find that you need a white and a black, probably from Sennelier or Schmincke, something that's really soft and intense because the white and black in the set are not very robust. And I just want to let you know that in case you're considering purchasing these. I do go over that in the review, but um, it was a little, uh, uh, it was a little disappointing to try to use the black and white from this set. Another thing that you want to be aware of with these pastels, if you like to work on black paper, is that the peach tones in the set do not show up very well on black paper. They don't show true on black paper. They're fine on lighter tones, but just on black, if you like, you can see I'm using that peach on the um, the beak, it's very washed out. So I mean, those are kind of um, nitpicky comments, but I just wanted to let you know in case that's something you were um, uh, you like to use. If you like to do portraits on black paper, this set is not really for you, I don't think. Um, I am testing the black there and I'm just like, oh, it just looks a little too gray, but still I wanted to use, for the most part, the pastels in this set because I was uh, preparing a review on these when I did this painting. And um, honestly, usually a good black pastel, it will be darker than a black pastel paper. And so I discovered <laughs> very shortly that I needed to, I needed to get a different paper here. I'm looking at the chart. I'm like, do I have the black? That doesn't seem like a black. I'm just, <laughs> I'm just like so perplexed at this point. Um, but I did decide since I used it in one area, I was going to add it a few other places. So it wouldn't kind of stick out. So I'm adding it in some of the shadow areas around the side of the body and also in the eyes of some of the peacock feathers. But then I realized that, oh, this is so much lighter than the black of the paper and I'm gonna need to go in with a more robust black. And I think I ended up using Sennelier black. We'll, we'll see that in just a second. But you know, if I do add a color somewhere, I try to find some other places to put it. So I keep harmony throughout the entire painting. 
I decided that I wanted to bring a little brightness onto the top of the head instead of using the uh, the black, which in the reference photo, you just kind of see a dash of black for the plumage. And I'm like, I know peacocks actually have these little iridescent feathers on the top of their heads. So I'm going in with this really pale aqua and adding that into the, um, the plumage at the top of the head and also some into the highlight of the chest just to kind of carry that throughout. And um, it's starting to look a little more finished. I know I'm going to need to dig out a really bright white and black, but um, I'm going as far as I can with the pastels here first. Now, a trick that I employ and something I recommend is that you save your brightest white and your darkest black for the end because you don't always need it. But if you do need it, waiting to the end to put it in is going to... Um, keep you from getting a muddy result. So just kind of keep a really, really dark and a really, really light in your back pocket. Don't pull it out till the end and then you're gonna have that um, that kind of Hail Mary at the end to save a painting if it's, uh, if it's going awry. And then if you don't need it, if you've got enough subtlety and enough value range without it, that's fine too. Um, but it's nice to have it. Um, I typically don't use white and black in watercolor. Sometimes I do. I mean, I, I never used to, but over the past few years, I've relaxed a lot about that. Um, but like that black could be a black pen or it could be a white pen, you know, just something like that. Knowing you have that there to save the day if things go awry is um, is comforting. And it's it's like training wheels, you know, you may you may not need them, but they're there in case you in case you do. Now, one thing that uh, the pastel pencil is also useful for is just go around the edges and sharpen things up. It almost just kind of like brings an edge in and you can even blend your pastels out with it a little bit. I'm using a, uh, a black pastel pencil here. Or it's actually tinted charcoal, but they're essentially the same thing. Uh, or, you know, they're, they're similar, similar enough of a product that you could use them together, in my opinion. Um, I honestly don't know what the difference between the, char the tinted charcoal from Derwent and the pastel pencils are because they, they act so similar to me. Uh, just the color range is, is different, I suppose. I was using that for some subtle shading around the face and the beak uh, where I didn't want to like go in there with a big gummy stick of pastel. I found that to be a lot easier. And this is a General's pastel pencil. I'm using that to go in and um, refine the beak a little bit. Those are very affordable, the General's line. You can find them um, like at Blick or Amazon. You can even find them, I think, at like uh, Walmart and Michaels and, you know, in store. They're more expensive there, but... Um, but definitely something that's very easy accessible. Now, whenever you see me take my picture off of screen, what I'm doing is I'm tapping it over my trash can. I have a big uh, trash can next to me and I just tap it over there. Now, these are not terribly dusty pastels, which is nice. I feel like the, the texture of this Canson paper had just enough grip that um, I didn't get very much dust at all, which is nice. It means the product I'm using is staying on the paper and I'm not wasting it in the trash can. If you're gonna work on a smoother paper, you may get more dust and you'll be more limited to the amount of layers that you put down. But I recommend you trying different papers and figuring out what works best for your style because we're all different and we all like different things. Our budgets are different. Um, you know, figure out what's best for you. Try different papers. Papers you can buy open stock are great because then you don't have to get a whole pack if you're not sure if you like it or not. Now I'm going in with my robust black and white. So I've got a Schmincke white pastel and a uh, Sennelier black pastel. I like both of those brands really well for my softer pastel layers. Um, I wouldn't do a whole painting in either of those brands because they're just too soft. I would start off with a harder line and work my way softer. So it's kind of that's another thing. It's kind of nice to have a variety of different pastels because then you can combine them to get the best effects. If I was going to start off with Sennelier and Schmincke, I would be limited to how many layers I could do because it would fill the tooth of the paper so quickly. But if I start off with a harder pastel or pastel pencil, I can work my way softer and softer and softer until I get to the stage where I'm putting in just the final details with a really soft pastels. It just, you know, it depends on how you like to work, uh, what your budget is, um, you know, what papers you like to use, and that's going to really um, inform what kind of pastels you like. Now you can see the difference here with this black pastel versus the black pastel that was in the Arctic set. It's so rich. This color is actually blacker than the black of my paper and it's really helping me get some depth and dimension with that bird. It's helping push the chest of the bird out so it has a little bit more of a 3D effect. Now I don't want to do this everywhere on the painting or I run the risk of flattening. So where I'm going to put this is going to be the deepest darks, maybe in some of the eyes of the um, 
of the feathers where you've got that really dark, it's almost just like a um, really, really dark shadow because they're so bright and iridescent and reflective. You kind of need that little hint of black to make the, uh, to have that contrast of the bright to give you that iridescence. And I'm just being very sparing. It's it's like you're seasoning a dish at the end, right? You've, you've spent all this time cooking a beautiful meal and you're going to add some salt and pepper, right? You're not going to douse it. You're going to add just a little bit until it's perfect, right? Same thing with your art. Your cooking is so much like art and um, you just don't want to overdo it. You can always go back later. You can always look at it and then the next day decide you're going to come in and add more to it. Um, and it's easier said than done because, you know, when you're at the end of a painting, it can be really, uh, really tempting to just want to keep fussing with it. But I implore you, don't do that. Just put it on a shelf, uh, walk away, come back, look at it the next day and see what you think. And this finishes up our painting. I did add a little highlight to the eye, but that's it. And I took the tape off the edges and um, I'm really happy with how this came out. It was fun to use these new pastels. And if you want a review of those, you can find it on my YouTube channel. Please give me a thumbs up before you go. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.